So this is going to be a little bit different of a video that I normally make, but hopefully this is something that I can do a lot more often. I'm going to show you guys how I make the light trails that are in our Kylea universe. So the first thing we're going to do is make a basic shape, right? So for this, we're just going to use, uh, let's say the, the spaceship is like a monkey's head or something like that. Um, let's go into the back of this. We're going to give it an engine of some sort. Okay, so here's our monkey spaceship. Not super aerodynamic, but um, you get the gist. We're going to create a plane, and this plane is going to act as our emitter object. So we're going to run this whole thing as a simulation, essentially, um, with particles. And instead of doing something like a smoke simulation, which, at least for my computer, is pretty heavy, um, and would take a lot of uh, computing power, we're going to use a particle simulation and then we can just adjust the um, qualities of the particles so that it appears as if it's kind of like a laser beam of uh, energy particles. Um, so yeah, um, first thing we're going to do, make the spaceship, then we're going to make our emitter plane. Um, to that emitter plane, I want you to add a emitter system. So when you do a normal emitter, the first thing that's going to happen is it's just going to kind of fall straight out of the back um, of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into um, the field weights and we're going to turn gravity all the way off. So what this does is now the particles just form, right? There's no um, gravity effect because let's say it's like a laser beam, you know, it's made of light. It's not made out of... Uh, typical um, something that would be affected by gravity but as you can see we are going the wrong direction so I would start off by going to your velocity setting the normal to zero and then we can do something like it should be um, let's try the z-axis so we're gonna do uh, because this is a stationary object let's do minus five meters per second. And this is something that you can adjust depending on the size of your render um, and on the speed of which you want the craft to go. So here's the basic effect. As you guys can see, not super convincing, um, but we're at least getting there, right? We have some sort of a stream following our thing. Um, next, we can adjust the lifetime. I typically go with around 100 frames. That seems like it fits most scenarios um, the best and just because this sequence is uh, 250 frames we're gonna end this on 250 and we're also gonna start this on negative 100 and what that will do is because we have a lifetime of 100 and if you were to look down here at the sequence negative 100 is 100 frames from frame 0 um, essentially it's gonna have it be constantly on that way when the animation um, it won't be a perfect loop but as you see, when the animation uh, finishes, we still have a particle system. So this would be something that you could just extend um, in another project. Okay, so now that we have our spaceship, we have the particles, we have a trail that we kind of like. Um, the next thing we're going to do is um, adjust kind of the noise of this particle system. So the first problem is that we're getting just one speed. And if you've ever looked at like an engine, right, you'd think that as it's coming out of the back of the engine or whatever, the turbine, it'd probably be going faster at first and then the speed would kind of fall off. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add a uh, force field and we're going to go down to wind. See this uh, little arrow? That's going to tell us what direction the wind is blowing. So we're going to rotate that um, 90 degrees on the X and then we're going to go 180 on the Z. So the arrow matches the direction of the um, uh, effect. So as you can see right now, we're at least getting some of that effect like I talked about. We're getting faster at first and then it's slowing down afterward. And if you go down into uh, here, this is going to be our settings. So as you can imagine, strength is the speed of which the wind is going. So a tip I like to use is always adjust way too much so you can see kind of what an effect is doing. So here's at 50. As you can see, now we have a spaceship that's flying extremely fast. So let's crank that down to maybe 10, somewhere in that range. 
that's feeling pretty reasonable if we were to look at this from um, far back. Uh, let's say we want it to go a little bit slower. We can maybe adjust that down to five. And as you see, that trail is kind of slinking back up because um, again, it only lasts for 100 frames. Okay, so we have a speed of five. Um, or the strength of the um, object is five. Now we want to adjust the flow of our object. So with the wind and with all force fields, to my knowledge, flow is basically the rate at which things will slow down after they get progressively farther away. So again, using the same idea, if we crank this up to five, you can see that it initially is coming out super fast, but then almost immediately it's slowing down to a stop. So this doesn't look super realistic. And with most spaceships, obviously you would animate the spaceship flying around. Um, but even with that being the case, there wouldn't be that much wind resistance or something like that. So something maybe 1.5 would give us the effect we're looking for. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, so in here we're getting a little bit of push and then at the end it's kind of slowing down. Maybe we can even adjust that to maybe a flow of two. Maybe split the difference, we'll go 175. Give us a little bit longer of a trail. But yeah, I'm liking the way that's looking. As you can see in this kind of first quarter section, we're getting um, pretty fast movement and then towards the end we're kind of trailing off. Um, the next step kind of thing we can do, you can adjust noise um, in here and this is something that you would um, be able to adjust later on as well. It's not super uh, important uh, at this step, but what you're going to want to do is uh, if you go to your particles, instead of having everything be at the exact same um, frames, because it's all generated here, and it's ending at 100, you kind of see this like invisible barrier. It almost seems like they're all dying at the same time. What we can do is we can adjust the lifetime randomness, put it around, let's say, 0.7, and we'll see how that kind of affects it. Um, okay, so here's the new thing. And as you can see, there is sort of an invisible like region within here where some particles are reaching. But as you can see, a lot of particles are disappearing in this region which just gives it a little bit more natural effect where towards the beginning you're getting a lot thicker uh, particles and then towards the end they're going to be a lot thinner. So lifetime randomness will just kind of help you break up um, the uniformity and that's one of the things with uh, 3D animation that you're going to always want to do because anytime you can make something less uniform it's going to seem more realistic to the um, person. So moving this doesn't really affect where it starts. It's just something that I like visually to do as if I'm kind of imagining this is the thing shooting out the uh, force field. So next force field I use in this effect, you can use vortexes depending on the effect you're going to go for. But I think an easier option is just a, a turbulence um, force field. So if we play this out, we can kind of see that like not too much is going on. So again, if we want to um, use the same strategy I used before, let's crank up the strength of this to something like 100, right? Let's see what that does. So as you see, now our spaceship is shooting out extremely turbulent particles, right? Obviously this, if you go to like an X view, this wouldn't look great. It's looking like more like a giant cloud of energy rather than like that kind of, and you can kind of see there is a stream kind of forming but not looking too great. So now that we know what it does, it kind of breaks up our particles. Let's bring it down to something a little bit more realistic, like 10. And there we go. We kind of have that shape we're looking for, where we have the tight particles around where the energy is highest, and then near where we kind of had that initial fall off from the wind, we kind of have things spreading out. The other advantage to this is now we kind of have these meandering particles that are existing kind of outside the main line, um, and that will help create more of that like realistic view. So right now this is probably looking um, decent enough. Again, if we were to adjust the speed of the ship, we could do that with the uh, wind factor, and we could also do that with the um, force at which the particles are being emitted. And then if we want to adjust the turbulence, we can do that. Um, another thing that I experimented with in the past is using, like I said, a, um, a uh, vortex node. 
And again, we're just going to rotate this um, 90 degrees and then another 90 degrees so that this is, uh, as you can see, the arrow you want always forcing the, the right direction. And then what this would do is it would be something more similar to like a portal kind of effect. And this is something that I experimented with early on. I just don't think I liked uh, the spinning element of it for like Kylia. But if you were to make another effect with uh, a whirlpool kind of energy or something like that, you can incorporate that. You could also incorporate the turbulence as well to kind of add um, uh, both of the effects on top of each other. So we could take um, our force field um, and then our turbulence and we could put the turbulence at five. And now we're kind of, maybe we put the turbulence at 10. And maybe we put the vortex a little bit lower at 0.5. So now you see how we're getting like kind of that rippling vortex effect. I actually quite like this. But yeah, so this, this feels um, also pretty decent to me uh, if you want to go for something like this. And then obviously we can delete that vortex and then it will go back to the way we originally had it where we're kind of getting... Um, um, that effect. So um, now that we have our um, main effects set up, the next thing that we're going to want to do is, um, let me go back to the initial setup since I changed everything. Um, so we're going to use this kind of um, original effect. Now the thing that you're going to want to do is um, change what this is, because obviously if we were to look at this in um, the rendered viewport, I, I just use a um, basic scene setup so that it's all rendered in cycles. But we're just rendering out like little um, circles right now, which obviously are not what we want to do. Um, we're going to make a mesh. And for most purposes, you can just use cubes or um, icospheres because they're going to be so small. And we're going to want to create a material. We're going to want to switch this material to... Um, an emission material, which will give us something that's light. I always use blue. Uh, let's mix it up. We'll use something like red. Um, and then here's what that's going to look like. We basically just have like this red uh, cube, and we can put that at like an emission level of two or something like that. Um, and then we're going to go back here. Um, so this will be our um, energy. Um, we'll just we'll just name it our energy for now, I guess. Um, so we're going to put the energy like particle thing right here, and then for here, we're going to go to our settings. We're going to go down to rotation. Doesn't Rotation is something that you can use, but for something like this, you're better off not using because the particles are so small, you won't really be able to tell the individual rotation. Um, but we're going to change um, what we want it to render as. Um, another tip is to put this in uh, a collection, right? So we're going to name this, uh, we'll just name this like part so that we know that that's the particle. And we'll put it in the energy um, bin so that when we go into here and we go into the emitter, um, we can change this to collection. And then we'll name the energy collection as where we want to source from. That way, if you ever want to have a particle system with like multiple color particles, you can use the collection as a place where you're storing that. Um, so now that we see this, obviously this is still visibly cubes, so unless you're going for kind of like a retro 2D kind of effect, you're not going to want them to be this big. So the next thing we're going to do is when we go down to render, we can change the scale. That's something that can also be changed with the object scale. Um, so depending on what you're doing with your scene, you can change one or the other, but just know that both of those places are something that you can do it as. Um, this is probably around the size that we're going to want to go to for this demonstration. Another thing you could do is you could come in here and subdivide this to give us a more broken up shape. And then we can apply that subdivision. Um, and then now as you come out, as you can see, all of our particles are now those little icosphere kind of shapes um, with like pretty decent geometry. So we're not taking up a ton of our system's resources. Um, Right now, we only have a thousand particles. It depends on how strong your system is um, in terms of your computer, how many you can make. 
I can make around a hundred thousand um, to a million depending on um, the effect. So as you can see, obviously my computer is now playing it a little bit under um, a little bit under uh, 15 frames a second, which you're gonna probably want more if you're doing um, like in uh, viewport uh, renders, but you can also bake this. But anyway, so here's kind of what it looks like. It's kind of fun to watch like the effect take place as it goes, but here's what we have right now. So we kind of have this like really interesting particle system that's kind of like branching out and turning into this like interesting shape, which again, probably wouldn't be able to be done, or I at least wouldn't be able to do this if I was, you know, doing this by hand, but it looks super, super cool to me. Uh, we get something like that. So then we're gonna come in here and now, as you can see, due to our um, thing being an emitter, now we kind of have this like laser light trail. Um, I'm gonna add a quick camera. I have mine set up to F1 to set up a camera. And then I'm going to just, oops, a little bit frozen. I'll go down here. Oh, I have my, <laughs> I put the camera in the collection with uh, <laughs> the energy particles, so it was rendering a bunch of cameras, I was so confused, um, and we'll just name this A cam for now, um, so we'll go to camera view, uh, where are we, um, hello, why can't I, there you go. Uh, we'll go to camera view and we'll move around our scene and we'll set up the camera where we want it and let's say we're going for kind of like a let's go for like a behind angle as the ship's like flying by us right so we'll get something like this and then this kind of i have a pro camera add-on which gives me where the focus is so we can adjust um we can adjust the focal uh distance so as you see, you can kind of tell where that's intersecting each part of the thing. Let's put it roughly there. Let's give ourselves a f-stop of two, and then let's render that out. Um, oh, let's change the samples because the sample, oh yeah, samples are set at 200. So let's see what this looks like. Again, you can fit as many um, particles as you think your computer can hold. But just as a general rule of thumb, um, try to stick, if you're doing this for like a long animation, try to stick to like a number per frames. That way you at least have an established flow rate. So like I go with like 100,000 per second, um, but that's something that you can adjust as uh, you, you do it. So. We're going to readjust our camera. We're going to give ourselves something more like this so that we can see kind of how everything is going. Um, and then we're going to adjust our focus to be focused on that. And then we're going to take our energy particle and we're going to give this an emission strength of 10. Actually, let's give it an emission strength of 20. We'll see what that looks like. Um, but yeah, this is an effect that you can like easily use for other projects. Um, this is just the one, and this is kind of how I like to do it. Again, messing with the turbulent strengths, messing with all of that will kind of give you different effects and give you different like aesthetics depending on what you're looking on. But yeah, that's how I make uh, my um, particle systems. And then uh, with compositing, you can adjust the kind of glow that comes off of the uh, particles and all that. But yeah, that's how you make uh, energy uh, for ships. So good luck. Hope it uh, turns out for you.